Wow, okay, Susie, so the, the room knows we're here. Right, so there's a bunch of sensors in this space that are determining whether or not somebody is occupying it uh, to turn on the lights, to turn on the HVAC system, as well as some of the other systems within the building. Okay, so now, as we look at this screen, is this the kind of thing that maybe a building supervisor or a, an operations manager would use to control all the systems within a space? That's exactly right. So we can look at a particular floor and building, we could look at multiple buildings and pull all that together in one user interface. So this is kind of a macro view of the building. In this case, we have a hospital where they can look at all the different spaces to make sure that the control system is working as expected. Okay, now this is the, the whole building. Can you look at individual rooms within that space? You can, so you can see that we have uh, lighting indicators, security, um, HVAC status, and then we can also go ahead and zoom into a particular space. In this case, we have a surgery suite. So we can look at the different parameters and the statuses within that space. So is this the kind of thing that a building manager would have to handle or could other staff members maybe have access to this uh, system as well? That's a great question. You know, our building managers aren't gonna be on site 24 seven. So they can uh, either schedule this in advance or they can uh, access the system remotely uh, with a mobile app so they can make some adjustments as they go. Okay, could also a, a nurse maybe prepare this surgery suite? That's exactly right. So sometimes we have non-technical users that need to interface with the system. And in that case, we can have a nurse maybe uh, set this room to occupied mode so that it does get conditioned uh, in advance of a surgery. Okay, and whenever it's not being used, you can shut it down and save energy that way. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, now. This is all very specific, all very, you know, you can get pretty granular in the way that this is all controlled. What are some of the goals and where is this going as we move forward? Yeah, from a technology perspective, we think that artificial intelligence is gonna start supplementing our control systems. And the reason for that is to continue to refine the energy savings opportunities that our customers might have. Basically what that means is we're taking data from the system um, both the occupancy as well as the way that the system reacted in the last couple of days, along with outdoor weather conditions. We take all that data and pull it together to automatically optimize the building. And in that case, it's really an energy saving opportunity. Excellent. Well, this, this has been really exciting. Everybody at Train Technologies has been great. Um, Scott's going to get together with George and I've got to get back to Invention Land. Thank you so much for coming. Let me show you out. Hey, Scott, welcome to Invention Land. Hi, George, thanks for having me. You bet, what's that? I have something for you here. It's an all electric, high efficiency chiller made out of building blocks. Very nice. Yeah, I thought your visitors might like to hold something in their hand, even though these systems sometimes are gigantic. No, well, they are. They're too big to hold in your hands, right? <laughs> they are. Oh, that's gonna go really well. I'll put it right in the museum where all the kids are coming down. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. You know, Invention Land, we're all about innovation and the world of tomorrow. So can you talk with me a little bit about Train Technologies and where we're headed? Yeah, well, Train Technologies is focused on innovations and inventions that help these systems use less energy in buildings because today the systems use about 40% of the energy in a building just to heat and cool the space. Wow. And that's too much. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. Is that a short-term, long-term goal? Where, where are we here? Yeah, we do have some short and long-term goals. One of the things we're focused on now is something we're calling the Gigaton Challenge. Well, so a gigaton, that sounds huge, Scott. It is huge, but it really means one billion metric tons of CO2 emissions that we want to reduce from our customers' operations by 2030. So a billion, okay, can you wait, can you put that into perspective for me? A billion metric tons is equal to 100 billion gallons of gasoline, it's also equal to 200 million vehicles on the roadways. That would be fantastic. It's gigantic, and it's a big goal for 2030, but we're not stopping there. Hmm. Our next focus is on building net zero heroes, which really is all of us, our customers, our employees, community members, even you. Hey, count me in. I wanna be one of those, a net zero hero. That's it, thanks George. Thank you.